Hello everyone. Now we have with us Akhil, who secured the 331st rank in the Indian Civil Service examination. First of all, congratulations Akhil Thank from you. our entire team. Thank you. So, Akhil is actually one among our family member who has started his preparation right from Endlight. Until now, he, ha he has been totally associated with Endlight. So, his results are really special to us. Anyway, I know that your uh, preparation was not a cakewalk. So, how was it? How was your entire preparation? Uh, well, like you said, uh, I started, I, like I planned to, uh, I, mean, I, st I was thinking to start my civil service preparation by, when my sister got into the service. And that was back in 2016. So I associated with Enlight in 2017 and joined the prelims comes means batch. And my first prelims was in 2018. Uh, I would say that that was my best attempt uh, in terms of the level of preparation. I think the result that came years later should will also have to be attributed to that level of preparation which I did back then. Okay. And then my second attempt was also, uh, I did not get through the prelims. Then I felt that I need to have a little break. That is when I joined the uh, Oracle, uh, where I worked as a quality analyst for a couple of years. And, and constantly in that period also, I was in touch with Enlight and especially Mahir sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that after, after working for a couple of years, it was time for me to come back and start preparing for civil services again. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then I gave my first attempt where I uh, did not, cle I, I cleared the prelims. I did not make it through the mains. Mm -hmm. I had actually mishit an essay and uh, my essay marks was really less. Okay. And then I gave up uh, another prelims where I cleared the mains but did not get through to the final list. I attempted the interview there. And then the last attempt came uh, where I finally made it to the list and that makes me really happy and it is actually very special to me as well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, so from what you said, uh, what I feel is that your graph is like an upward sloping graph, right? So like initially you didn't clear the prelims, next time you didn't clear the mains and the, okay, uh, so it went uh, like that. So yes. uh, what I can see is that uh, consistently you clear the prelims in your last three attempts. Mm -hmm. Initially you couldn't uh, make it. So what was that uh, difference that you made in your strategy? Especially last year, uh, only after the um, results, there were only very few days uh, left for you to prepare for the prelims, but still you managed it somehow. So what is your, uh, what was your strategy? Uh, like I said, uh, said before, I think the first and the foremost factor is that during my first attempt, although I did not clear the prelims, my fundamentals became quite strong then. Because uh, certain subjects like uh, polity, economy, environment, I had put in a lot of hours back then. And that contributed to my preparations in the later stages as well. So that is one factor, I would say. And then I think uh, I had cut short at my resources. I stopped chasing uh, all those, I mean, lot of resources that is available in the market. I started focusing more on the static part and how to apply those static part in the current affair questions as well. Okay. And then uh, started at uh, I mean, giving more tests. In fact, I have given all the prelims test series that happened in Enlight. Okay. Um, and I started preparing a bit more smartly as well, mm -hmm. focusing more on previous year questions. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, like you have said, uh, in the in my the previous attempt, the number of days that was available for prelims was very less. So what I had did was that I did not have time to cover the economic survey. Okay. Instead, I had uh, taken up the economic survey question paper, and then I uh, solved that. And all those fact uh, questions that I did not know, I studied that. Okay. And in fact, I got one question exactly like that in the final examination as well. Yeah. So there was a question about uh, which country was producing most amount of cobalt or something. So okay. I think that I got from the question paper. From Enlighted like Series. Yes, Enlighted okay. like Series. So that is, a, uh, that is the strategy that I started applying. Uh, okay. Limiting resources and focusing more on the fundamentals. Okay, good. Uh, okay, now how was your trust with the uh, main papers? Uh, mains paper, I feel that once you start getting the, like you start understanding how to write an answer, it progressively gets better okay. because uh, for uh, mains also I had associated with the mains test series of uh, Enlight okay. and in fact I had attempted mains test series thrice with Enlight. So I had a lot of material and resource. Mm -hmm. So my uh, main plan was to uh, concise that material, make it very concise and update it. Okay. So that uh, eventually I will still have a grip over the subject or even if the like uh, even while handling other optional subject or uh, focusing more on papers like papers where I was weak. 
Okay. And there was this uh, last lab sessions that happened in NLIT wherein you are given five questions per day. Okay, daily practice. Daily practice. And that actually helped me uh, write the answers in time. Okay. Because I had a, a slow pace of writing and okay. uh, I think I utilized this last lab uh, session really well. Okay. Oh, and I continuously attended the discussions after that and I uh, checked my answers with Abu, Ch Abu, Abu uh, Charyan, uh, Joseph Alex and Okay. Uh, sir as well. So all these factors continuously helped me mm -hmm. and for modern history actually she was my mentor and she also quite helped me a lot. Okay. So all these factors together came uh, okay. to the result. Okay. So regarding means uh, optional plays a most important role. Yes. So your optional is philosophy. Um, why did you first of all choose philosophy and also how did it aid you in your entire preparation? Uh, so again uh, I completed my engineering and uh, one thing I was certainly sure of was that I am not going to keep engineering as an option and uh, for that matter electronics and communication was not an available subject okay, either right. and I was not very strong in that so I had to look for another option and the, there were certain uh, criteria that I had placed in my mind okay. for instance while uh, selecting a new subject and uh, in, a cons in a constraint time mm -hmm. I had to have a proper mentor who could help me through the journey. Mm -hmm. So Mayersar was available here and I attended certain demo classes of Mayersar. In fact, I attended uh, five to six demo classes mm -hmm. and I started liking the subject a bit more as well. Mm -hmm. So I found that it, to, it is more aligned to my taste. And then I also understood that the syllabus of philosophy as such is comparatively concise. Mm -hmm. And the subject is also static in nature so that you don't have to continuously update the subject over time. Okay. And there are a certain level of uh, overlap that we can see between uh, philosophy and ethics and uh, mm -hmm. essay as well. In fact, I had used uh, certain uh, concepts of uh, philosophy in my final examinations and in essay as well. Mm -hmm. So it has it. Uh, all these factors were the pros while choosing philosophy as the option. And of course, there are certain limitations as well. For instance, if like if the subject is not for you then uh, maybe you might find it a bit dry. There mm -hmm. is a lot of topics yeah. which you have to by heart. Mm -hmm. But uh, my sir's classes in such a Very way that uh, mm -hmm. like uh, all those students who attended with me also have stuck with philosophy over all this while and I stuck with it for all five years. Yeah. So that is there. And um, there are certain other challenges yeah. like uh, every year you see that certain options do a little bit better than the other option. So if it is your year, it is your year, yeah. it is not, then it is not. So that is also a factor. That's not in our hands. Yeah, that is not in our hands. So I, I chose to be with philosophy all this well and I am very happy that I did that. Okay, okay. Okay, so how did you manage your interview, like your personality test preparation? Uh, with respect to personality test, like it is the most, uh, it is the, I would say it is the phase wherein you can sit back, relax and prepare. Because first thing, uh, I was in second phase, so I had a bit more time as well. And uh, you get to do the things that you really like as well. For instance, uh, in my DAF, I had kept dancing as one of my interests. So you get to research more on that. Okay. Similarly, uh, I personally like to uh, read newspapers, discuss all those topics with my friends. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what you do in interview preparation as well. And in that phase, actually, my sister uh, had also helped me a lot because she is also an opinionated person. Okay. So you exchange views. Mm -hmm. And similarly, uh, uh, Abu Chetan, uh, Joseph Chetan, everything, okay. everyone uh, actually helped me with overall discussions. We had a ecosystem here to discuss okay. different topics as well. And with respect to philosophy, again, uh, this also is a topic which could get asked in your interview. Okay. So we had conversations with my sir. You get to read new books relating to that. So all those factors are actually interesting. It's okay. just that you have to handle that particular day and okay. hold your nerve so that you don't uh, make a mistake in the interview. So, but it's a, a quite a fun phase, I would say. <laughs> okay. uh, so Akhil, um, what advice do you give to aspiring civil service candidates? Uh, I would say like if you are an aspirant who is just about who is venturing into the field of civil service whether thinking whether it is for you or not I would say that uh, certain concerns which I had while I started preparing was that whether I am good enough to uh, clear this examination considering that the syllabus is really vast uh, but the factor is that I think uh, um, UPSC or civil service is a common man's exam because it doesn't demand that you should have a certain percentage uh, in your graduation for that matter. Uh, in fact, I was a person who was an average student in my schooling uh, as well as in my college. So it is it is not necessarily not for you. You, okay. you could still do well. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, i think once you start preparing it is all about committing yourself into it and uh, there is no half hearted attempt uh, there is only complete attempt so you cannot give 80 percentage and then expect to have a result once you are into this thing you have to give your 110 percentage uh, make use of every resource that is available and do your best so that is my uh, advice to people who have not ventured and is thinking whether to join uh, mm -hmm. but to those students who is about to just about to write the prelims okay. uh, I would like to say that you have to focus a bit more on CSAT, considering that over time mm -hmm. CSAT is becoming more on the tougher side mm -hmm. and uh, even if the number of days are less, you still can make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, for that you need to work smartly, for instance focus on more on PYQs, mm -hmm. uh, topics associated with that. Similarly, uh, invest time more in the most asked areas okay. for instance economy quality mm -hmm. and last year i feel geography also got asked a bit more so you can focus on those topics mm -hmm. and uh, for instance art and culture is an area which is just known to be less productive yes. so if you do not have time invest less in that but if you have time invest more mm -hmm. so these are the things that you can do in the next few days yes. so as to make a difference in the prelims and once you get through that prelims in, then it's a more of an open game where you still can make a difference in three months. Okay. So I would say uh, just think of that particular day and be confident. And uh, if you can, if you if you feel that you have complete, you have done uh, right in your preparation, there is no need to worry that whether you will fail in the prelims or not. It is actually a doable thing. Uh, just make sure that the CSAT is done pretty well. Okay. That was a wonderful insight, Akhil. So we had a very good time with Akhil, and I believe that. Uh, lots of people might have gained a lot of information from him. So uh, I wish you all success in your future endeavors on behalf Thank of you. Team Enlight. Thank, Thank you, Akhil. Thank you.